Welcome back, everyone. This is Brother Doug, and um, we are back, and we are going to be reading Chapter 97 of Enoch. This is the part two of our New Moon study. So um, our sister Susan will be reading Chapter 97 Enoch, and here we go. I don't see anything in it. Nope. There it is. Okay, whole ten verses. Believe, you righteous, that the sinners will become a shame and perish in the day of unrighteousness. Be it known unto you that the Most High is mindful of your, your destruction, your destruction, and the messengers of the Shamaim rejoice over your destruction. What you will do, you sinners, and where you will flee on that day of judgment when you hear the voice of the prayer of the righteous, Therefore, you shall be like them against whom this word shall be a testimony. You have been companions of sinners. And in those days, the prayer of the righteous shall reach unto Yahuwah. And for you, the days of your judgment shall come. And all the words of your unrighteousness shall be read out before the great Kadosh One, and your faces shall be covered with shame, and he will reject every work which is grounded on unrighteousness. <clears throat> Woe to you, you sinners who live on the mid-ocean and on the dry land, whose remembrance is evil against you, Woe to you who acquire silver and gold and unrighteousness and say, we've become rich with riches and have possessions and have acquired all we have desired. And now let us do what we schemed. For we have gathered silver and the farmers are many in our houses and our granaries are full as with water. Therefore, like water, your lies shall flow away, for your riches shall not endure, but speedily depart from you, for you have acquired it all in unrighteousness, and you shall be given over to a great curse. All right, so let me unmute everyone, and wow. It's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, so it seems like it's talking about acquiring wealth um, unrighteously, um, which could really be compared to modern day, the way nations acquire wealth and the way the bankers, these banker cartels have acquired wealth from people by creating wars to become richer. So I wonder if those people are talking about those globalists, people like that, the Illuminati. Do you think? It's possible. It's possible. I was just going to bring out even those who do the smallest work for the unrighteous will be in this group because they they might help uh load those airplanes with the poisons that they're spraying on everybody and then there's the pilots who get paid who knows how much money to scatter it all over the world and um then the people who are farmers 
that the, buy the Roundup and uh, spray all of our food with Roundup and other nasty things. And the people that put fluoride in our water, there's, there's many unrighteous people that are doing very unrighteous works. And I believe all of them are in that category unless they repent. Because they're paid big bucks to do these things. Don't think they're not. And think, think about this. What if they decided not to take the money and to repent of their unrighteous works? That would be a great day to rejoice. It's like, suppose they gave a war and no one came. Well, unfortunately, uh, Revelations kind of spoils that for us. They, uh, Revelations actually says they did not repent of the works of their, their hands, the idols they worshipped. So, uh, if anything, we actually know the ending. They're not going to repent of their works, even when they're getting tortured and the bowls of wrath are coming. They're, they're still... They're still being rebellious and still not repenting. And um, I think it's referring to those that actually take the mark of the beast. They don't repent. They, they keep on doing wickedness. And um, some people have theorized that they can't repent. Supposedly, when you take the mark of the beast, you can't repent. Some, but um, I think they're just choosing not to. And I've got a little bit of insight in that uh, from listening to Anthony Patch. Um, they have a supercomputer now that is the intelligence of over 14 billion humans. And they can actually chart every movement of every person on this planet. Everywhere you go, they can, they're watching you. And whatever you do, they watch you. So I don't think anyone who is part of that willingly can repent because what, what it does is if you take a little shot in the arm, uh, it's called a, a lace that comes to the base of your your uh, head right here and uh, actually controls. It gets into the medulla oblongata and up into the cerebrum and can control a human being. Whatever you, whatever you want to do or whatever it wants you to do, it will do what it you will do what it wants you to do rather than what you want to do is what I'm saying because they'll, they'll have that much control over you if you take that, that interlace that um, attaches to your spine, spinal cord. It's, it's rather scary. And I think that's what is actually um, considered the mark of the beast. But there's a lot of parts to the mark of the beast because if you are keeping Sabbath and, and the uh, set apart days that Yahuwah tells you to keep, then you will not take the mark of the beast. You, you cannot take it. But if you are a Sunday keeper and you don't care about what Yahuwah wants, you're most likely going to take that mark. And unfortunately, there are more who will take it than will not. And just look around you. Look at all the people that don't care what they do. They don't care to obey Yahuwah. They just want to 
get along and be happy or whatever and truthfully they're not happy but they will take the mark of the beast and they will be happy for a short time until Yahuwah comes to tell them what they're going to get for what they did. It's a very scary thing to. You know, that never makes sense to me. It still does not make sense to me. What doesn't? Well, when I was an unbeliever, I could no more have chosen Yah than the man on the moon. I just, just I, I knew nothing about it. So how can I be held responsible when I, I knew nothing? I didn't know. I didn't know. My dad doesn't know. My mom doesn't know. My brothers don't know. They were like me. They, they don't know. And Yah called me, I think, because it was just, the circumstances were just too strange. So he called me, so now I know. Now I'm responsible. Now if I were to turn my back on him, those things should happen to me. But I just, I didn't know back then. It's just like somehow it's not fair when you don't know. I didn't know. I know. Um... But here's what Yahuwah promises. He says he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh before the great and I don't mean to interrupt you, day of Yahuwah. I heard that that was in the millennium that he pours out his spirit on all flesh. Did anybody ever hear that? I just heard that yesterday. Alan Horvath no. said that is referring to the millennium, not like now. No, I think it's referring to I think it's right before the Great Tribulation, or be, no, before, right before the Day of Yahuwah, I yeah, believe I is what he said. Why he thinks that, because that's the first time that would make sense. That would make sense if that happened yeah. in the millennium. Well, okay, well, that makes hey, sense. No, everyone would know what they're doing if he did that. Right. And, and I then, believe that he meant then if you rejected it then do you get the punishment you know better and you do it anyway that i get but when you don't mm -hmm. i just don't know judging people who don't know just doesn't seem fair no they will know they will all know the difference between right and wrong and righteousness and unrighteousness and and they'll make a choice every person person that lives at that time will have to make a choice and whatever choice they make they will receive the consequences of that choice okay that makes better sense so let's see here um, is there anything else that we could get from 97 here? So pretty much what I see is that even the Malachim are actually rejoicing against the sinners, actually says, which I find interesting mm -hmm. because you have like the paradigm of for every one person that repents and believes in Yahusha, it's, it says uh, Malachim in heaven rejoices. So you have Malachim rejoicing when someone repents and spiritually becomes a child of the Father, and they also rejoice when sinners are being destroyed. So it's like a, a parallel there. Um, yeah, it is. Um, here. Um, Other than that, I couldn't take much else from this chapter other than it's talking about the day of Yahuwah again. It's talking about the day of his wrath and how are they going to stand the day of his wrath. Um, uh, 
Um, other than that, oh, this is interesting. It says, and all the words of the unrighteous shall be read out before the great Kadosh one or Kadosh one, and your faces shall be covered with shame. So this kind of sounds like the judgment seat here where uh, they're going to read out all the words that have been spoken, possibly talking about all the books that are opened in Revelations. Well, they have to have all the books open to them to make that choice. But thankfully for those of us who have made the right choice, we um, will be taken to a place of safety, healed of our diseases, and receive the teachings that we've missed out on from Yahusha. Right, so um, let me just check on how long of a chapter 98 is going to be. Um, we got 15 verses. Um, I think, let's see here. We got still nine minutes left. Um, I think we could probably fit this in with 15 verses. Um, who, who would like to read next? Um, I know Bobby and Kristen actually didn't get a chance to read yet. Yeah, I'll take Bobby. it. Bobby? Yep. Okay. Hey, Kristen. Okay. And now I swear unto you, to the wise and to the foolish, for you shall have many experiences on the earth. For you men shall put on more adornments than a woman, and more colored garments than a maiden in royalty and in splendor and in power and in silver and in gold and in purple and in splendor and in food, they shall be poured out as water. Therefore, they shall Jump. be lacking in instruction and wisdom and they shall perish thereby together with their possessions and with all their esteem and their splendor and in shame and in slaughter and in great destitution, their spirit there shall, shall be, be the fiery furnace. I have sworn unto you, you sinners, as a mountain does not, has not become a slave, and a hill does not become the handmaid of a woman. Even so, sin has not been sent upon the earth, but man of himself has created it. And under a great, under a great curse, they who commit it shall fall. And barrenness has not been given to the woman, but on account of the deeds of her own hands, she dies without children. I have sworn unto you, you sinners, by the Kadesh Great One, that all your evil deeds are revealed in the Shamayim, and that none of your deeds of oppression are covered and hidden. And do not think in your spirit, nor say in your heart that you do not know, and that you do not see that every sin is recorded in the Shamayim every day in the presence of the Most High. From here on, you know that all your oppression with which you oppress is written down every day till the day of your judgment. Woe to you, you fools, for through your folly you shall perish, and you transgress against the wise, and so goodness shall not be your portion. And now know that you are prepared for the day of destruction. Therefore, do not hope to live, you sinner, but you shall depart and die. For you know no ransom, for you are prepared for the day of the great judgment, for the day of tribulation and great shame for your spirits. Woe to you, you obstinate of heart, who work wickedness and eat blood. From where have you good to eat and drink and be filled? From all the good which Yahuwah the Most High has placed in abundance on the earth, therefore you shall have no peace. Woe to you who love the deeds of unrighteousness. Why do you hope for good to happen unto yourself? Know that you shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous and they shall cut off, cut off your necks and slay you 
and have no compassion upon you. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous, for no grave shall be dug for you. Woe to you who bring to naught the words of the righteous, for you shall have no hope of Christ. Woe to you who write down lying and wicked words, for they write down their lies that men hear them and act wickedly towards neighbor. Therefore, they shall have no peace, but die a sudden death. Wow. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Wow. That's very clear right there. That's very clear cut. Those that write down lies. Huh. Sounds familiar. Jeremiah 8, 8. The pen of the scribe has worked falsehood. So, uh, basically he's saying because you write down lies, you've caused people to uh, bear false witness against their neighbor. Um, let's see here. Eating blood. All right. This, this might be talking about the secret societies here, I'm thinking. Yeah. Because uh, the occult love drinking blood, eating blood. They look at themselves like they're vampires or bats. They're... So this this might be talking about the occult here, I'm thinking. Um, it definitely sounds like it could be. See. And telling them that their deeds of oppression are covered. They think that their, their deeds are covered and hidden. But in the Shamayam, they, they know all. And all these deeds are being written down. So the the world doesn't know well not all the world knows of all their deeds but it can't be hidden from Yahuwah. we know what they're doing Yah knows what they're doing but you're right the majority of the population don't know yeah yeah well they're they're bringing it to the light now they're bringing it to the light now. I just recently found out that pedophilia is being legalized. Um, a lot of the stuff that they're going to be doing in the that they've been doing in the dark is going to be normalized in society. That uh, they're starting to make ped pedophiles, male pedophiles, look like they're normal. Um, trying to say that pedophilia is normal, and so you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of stuff they're doing in the dark is going to come to the light, and people are actually going to accept it. And um, I have a feeling bestiality is going to be next after this pedoph pedophilia law. There, it's going to be to the point where anything is legal. But you know something? I think that all this coming out, all that has been covered, being uncovered, um, I feel it's also like choose this day whom you will serve because there are people who have this wickedness in their hearts and not all act upon these things but now say for instance in Canada how it's become legal for bestiality you know people now see okay I can do that I've had this wicked thought in my in my heart and you know it's okay and with the pedophilia and and all these other horrible, abominable acts that are being committed throughout the land, you know, think about it. It's also people feeling that they're being given license. And Hashtatan knows that his time is almost up. And spir spiritual warfare is like never before. Somebody should send this chapter Get an anonymous letter in the mail with this chapter in it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 this chapter definitely it definitely kind of woke me up seeing that there. I was like, wow, scripture doesn't usually talk about that verbatim. Um, even though the Torah does say, you know, don't 
don't uh, don't eat something with blood in it. But this is like talking about people that are actually eating blood. Like, so I mean this, which you also have stuff that's being normalized too. The there's uh, the Santa Clara diet. There's like a show or movie called the Santa Clara diet that Drew Barrymore stars in. And they're trying to make uh, cannibalism normal. Um, so, I mean, it's it seems like this is referring to the elitists. That you, who is going to destroy these elite people that are wicked, that, you know, sacrifice little children. That, you know, that are eating blood, that think they gain some type of power from eating blood. Because that's what Aleister Crowley was teaching. And that supposedly, you know, he even taught pedophilia too. I mean, so I mean, it seems like this is directly against people that are almost willingly wicked and willing.